Over the years I've made many, many clocks and most of the ones that were of any kind of quality at all were made of oak. But I've only made one that was made of mahogany and this is it. And I'm surprised because I really like the looks of this wood. Well now I'm going to make another mahogany clock. In the past my clocks were all basically the same, although sometimes they were square. But most of the time they're either 6, 8 or 12 sided. And this time I wanted to come up with something completely different. So I drew this out and we'll see what happens here. Well there's something that I realized after I carried this mahogany down into my workshop and that is that this is probably going to be a kind of heavy clock for a wall clock. Those of you who have been doing woodworking as a hobby are well aware that a 2x4 isn't really 2 inches by 4 inches. It's 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. You lose half an inch. Well, I bought this 1x8 board of mahogany and so when I was looking at it I thought that's not even 7.5. It's only 7.25. Now this is an an industry problem. And do I sound irked? Well, I'm a little bit irked. I mean, why don't they just call it a 1 by 7? That'd be closer. Well, here we go with the first cut on the new mahogany clock. And you know the saying, measure twice, cut once. Well, I'm not working with cheap spruce here. I measured three or four times. This is a nice saw for making nice, accurate cuts but it throws sawdust everywhere. So that's why I've got hoses hooked up everywhere I can. These two pieces are going to be for the back. I'm going to have to join them together. And they were just slightly cupped, very slightly cupped. So I'm just going to plane them down here just a little bit and make them nice and flat. It only took one pass and it's perfectly flat. For anybody who's watching this video and is someday planning on getting himself a jointer, I recommend spending the little extra and getting an 8 inch wide one. It comes in handy like this every so often. Okay, we'll just square up the two edges that are going to be joined here. It shouldn't take too much here to get the crowning off those boards and putting it through the thickness planer will get both boards exactly the same thickness. My boards are nice and flat and I've only lost not even a sixteenth of an inch altogether. That's not bad. I made a special jig just for these boards. Now I know I made something very similar to this a couple of months ago but this time I wanted to dado out a notch just where the glue line was going to go. My other clamping system, while it kept the boards nice and flat, it smeared the glue around pretty bad where the clamps actually clamped down on the board. Now the idea here is that it should be a lot easier to remove a bead of glue than it would be to remove glue that had been smeared around on that nice mahogany. These two boards will be for the upper and lower part of the front of the clock. I've already passed them through the jointer and got them nice and flat and two of the edges are perfectly squared up. Now I know that whoever gets this clock is not going to want to see if it'll float, but I'm using my good quality waterproof glue here instead of just plain carpenter's glue. By watching the assembly of these two boards, you should get a better idea of how this jig I made actually works. I really like this notched clamping idea. I'm sure I'll be using it again. You can see in the notch in that 2x2 two two how it goes right over the glue. doesn't touch it at all. From the drawing that I made in the computer, I printed out a copy of the spindle. 
and then I glued it onto a piece of scrap lumber and I'm just going to shape it here now to the right shape and that'll be the template that'll go in the duplicator. Now sometimes stuff that I draw on the computer actually doesn't look that good in real life so I did a couple of tests here just to see how it would look on some scrap spruce. These clock finials are not going to be very fancy but at least they're mine. The lumber store that I got this mahogany from didn't have any 2x2 two two mahogany so I'm going to have to make something up here for the finials. Here I've ripped four pieces. They're an inch and a half wide by three quarters of an inch thick and that'll give me a one and a half by one and a half square piece when I'm done. And I should end up with uh, 20 pieces here and that'll make up for the 10 finials that I need for the clock. I had a piece of mahogany left over from that little clock that I made over 20 years ago and I took a couple of pieces and laminated them together and I turned down a little spindle just to see how it would look and I'm going to hope for the best here. I think it's going to work. Everything's all laid out and ready to go. My clamps are adjusted to the right size. I should have been a surgeon. Well, maybe not. Well, I think it's probably better too much glue than not enough. I'm not going to be doing any shaping on the very ends of these pieces, so I'm using my headless pinner here not to hold the pieces together, but to keep them from sliding around when I'm putting the clamps on. All ten pieces are all glued together, the glue is squeezing out, and I've learned a long time ago you can never have too many clamps. I want to let the glue on those pieces dry for oh, a good 24, maybe 48 hours before I put them in the lathe. So I may as well get started now on the rest of the case. This mahogany I notice is very easy to cut. It takes very little pressure on the blade here. Another thing that I noticed about this mahogany is that the sawdust is very powdery. It has a tendency to hang in the air. Now I know you can't see it, but underneath this scroll saw I do have a dust collection system hooked up and it's uh, going into a one horsepower dust collector right now uh, and helps a bit but that little puffer on the top I don't know what I can do about that. In my computer drawing the curves here were nice and rounded and symmetrical but I noticed afterwards that I didn't stay on the line just quite right in some places and so I'm just going to round it off just slightly here. That looks pretty good. Now just three more to go. Because I wanted to make as much use of that nice mahogany back as I could, I determined that the rails should be approximately 29 inches long here. The miter saw is all set up here now, and remember, measure twice, cut once. I like that saying. If I was to leave these rails the way they are, they'd be a little bit too wide. And that would mean that the opening where the door is, that the pendulum's going to be visible in, would be a little bit too narrow. And you wouldn't be able to see as much of that nice mahogany back as I'd like. And these strips that I'm cutting off here, they're going to be great for another project I've got in mind. Like a segmented bowl or platter. You remember earlier when I had to plane down that 8 inch wide board to make it nice and flat? Well, that made it approximately 68 thousandths of an inch thinner than the rest. So, I'm just going to have to plane down the rails here now to make them match. After this frame is all glued together, a few passes through the drum sander and everything's going to match up perfectly. Well, you know, this is pretty much perfect. I think I better quit while I'm ahead here. Nice and flush. Now, I know from experience that glue I've been using is, like, super strong. However, I'm going to use biscuits as well, just as an added safety precaution. 
When I bought this little Mastercraft biscuit jointer a few years ago, I bought it because it was dirt cheap. I think it was one of those half price deals. And what I'm finding is that it gets hot unusually fast. But I guess I shouldn't complain, it did the job. With a little modifying, I was able to rework that gluing jig that I'd made up earlier. And it seems to be holding this frame nice and straight.